Hi, and welcome to Catering Toolbox. I'm Doug Biggs. This is the first part in our video series on barbecue picnic catering. Today, my team and I are going to show you how we organize and prepare one of our most popular barbecue picnic menus, our Santa Maria style barbecue. It's named after a town just north of here that popularized this type of menu, especially barbecue tri-tip, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. This is a combination menu where guests have their choice of both tri-tip and barbecue chicken, along with toss garden salad, barbecue baked beans, potato salad, garlic bread, and fresh tomato salsa. It's about 6.30 in the morning and my crew's already hard at work. It's gonna be noisy, there's a lot of commotion going on, the convection ovens are running, but I wanna give you an idea of what it's like inside a real commercial kitchen. We're not staging anything here. Everything we're doing is prepping and getting ready for an actual event. So let's get to work. Okay, it's Thursday, it's two days before our party, and it's time to start prepping our beef tri-tip. We completely trim all the exterior fat from the tri-tip. This keeps the grill from flaring up during cooking, and the guests really appreciate a lean slice on their plate. Trimming takes some practice to get fast, but it's not difficult. You can purchase tri-tip trimmed, but you'll pay a premium. Rule number one, never skimp on the quality of your ingredients. We only use choice grade premium Angus beef. The small amount of money you might save by using a lower grade of beef such as Select or No Roll will end up costing you dearly in the future with customer complaints for tough and dry meat. Once trimmed, we season our tri-tip with a multi-purpose steak seasoning. We actually package it as DJ's world famous barbecue seasoning and give it to our clients as a thank you gift along with DJ's world famous barbecue sauce. We're using one tri-tip per six guests per this party, which we've determined is a perfect amount for a combination meal. Once trimmed and seasoned, we wrap our pan tightly in plastic. Notice how we wrap completely around the pan. This way, if you're out at the event and you trip on your way to the grill, your tight wrapping job is gonna save the day. We start by dumping our chicken onto our food prep sink so we have easy access to all the different pieces. From here, we separate the pieces into different tubs. Breast with wings in one, leg pieces in the other, and thighs in the other. This will make it very easy to put onto our pans and get it ready to cook. As we separate the thigh pieces, we cut off the excess fat and skin. The breast pieces and leg pieces are good to go as they are. Because some guests choose to have only tri-tip or only chicken, Planning on one piece of chicken per person ensures we won't run out. Okay, now it's time to pan up our chicken. We start with a full-size sheet pan, spray it with a little non-stick spray, and then add some of our all-purpose seasoning. Now we arrange the chicken on the pans. We place the breasts in one section, the thighs in the middle, and the legs on the end. We interlock the pieces so that we can fit each piece on the pan. Okay, once we have all of our chicken laid out, we add some of our all-purpose seasoning. Finally, we wrap each pan with plastic wrap, we mark it with the name of the job and the number of guests, and we place it on our speed rack, ready to go into the walk-in for cooking on Saturday. We start with a high-quality canned baked beans, and we simply dress it up by adding a bit of barbecue sauce. One number 10 can of baked beans serves 25 guests. We use vegetarian baked beans for the benefit of the five to 10% of guests who do not eat meat. Once we have the cans open, we drain off some of the excess juice. We then add the beans to one of our four inch deep hotel pans. This pan holds four cans of beans and all together will serve 100 people. Now we add in our barbecue sauce. We wipe off the edges and now here's the key to getting this pan of beans ready for the oven. We start by covering it with a sheet of plastic wrap. Next, we cover the pan with a sheet of aluminum foil. The plastic wrap will keep the acids and the juice from the beans from contacting the foil and actually dissolving the foil. The beans will go right into the oven, just like this. We finish by writing the name of the company along with the number of guests on the foil, along with the ingredients in the pan. Okay, it's one day before the party and it's time to prep our garden salad. 
The key to prepping our romaine lettuce is to trim off the bottoms and tops of each head and then soak them inside a sink full of cool water. We'll then rinse each leaf of lettuce and set them to drain inside a colander. Once our romaine lettuce has had time to drain and dry, we chop it. We try and keep the heads together to make this job a little bit easier. We'll slice the lettuce crosswise and then slice it a couple of times lengthwise. This gives us a nice consistency for the salad. Likewise, we chop our tomatoes into bite-sized pieces. For our black olives, we buy them already sliced in cans. Our red cabbage comes in a full head. It's easy to shred and it adds beautiful color to the salad. Notice the flutes we cut into our cucumbers. This adds texture and interest to our salad. We're building the salad inside a standard 16-inch plastic pebble bowl. We've determined that this bowl is the perfect size to serve 50 guests. We continue to build the salad in layers until we have a beautiful completed salad. We take a standard heavy-duty plastic bag and we dump the salad into the bag. Then we close the bag and press it to remove most of the air. We'll then tie the bag and now we have a complete salad ready to go for 50 people. Once we get to the job, we can simply open this bag, put it back into a bowl, and it's ready to serve. I found a supplier that supplies us with cooked and cut up potatoes. It's simple from here to add the ingredients to make our potato salad. We plan on one quarter pound of potato salad per guest, and like all our other menu items, we bring some extra just in case. We begin by adding some sweet pickle relish. Next, we add some chopped celery. Next, we add a little bit of chopped parsley for color. Okay, we simply mix all of these dry ingredients together. A little bit of salt and pepper and we're nearly there. Our ingredients here consist of mayonnaise, mustard, sour cream, and some dill pickle vinegar. Once we have all of our wet ingredients in a bowl, we simply mix it up by hand using a wire whip. Okay, next we just add our dressing and mix it up. Gloved hands make this job quick and easy. We found that simply by reusing our sour cream tub that we can put the potato salad in there, snap a lid back on, and it's ready to transport. With the Santa Maria style barbecue, this salsa is actually a condiment that's used for the tri-tip. Ingredients include canned diced tomatoes and juice, diced white onions, diced green onions, chopped fresh jalapenos, cilantro, salt, pepper, and garlic. It's so simple to make your own fresh salsa, and what a difference it makes in the eyes of the customer. The canned diced tomatoes come fairly chunky. We like to put them in the blender and chop them up just a bit. Once we have all our ingredients chopped, we simply assemble everything and mix it up. We place our salsa in a container for transport, and the key here is to wrap it up tightly. You never know what's gonna happen to items as you transport it. And just like all the other menu items going out on this job, we mark it with the name of the job and the number of guests. We plan on two ounces of salsa per guest times 100 guests is 200 ounces of salsa. Divided by 128 ounces per gallon gives us one and a half gallons of salsa for 100 guests. I have my loaves of bread that I've ordered from a local bakery. I have my melted butter. I simply dip the loaf of bread in the melted butter and place it on my sheet pan. Okay, now it's ready for seasoning. I simply take some fresh garlic powder, some of our all-purpose seasoning salt, and some freshly shredded Parmesan cheese. I'll finish with a little dried parsley flake for color. We start by slicing the bread lengthwise and then cut it into equal pieces. We get 20 to 24 pieces out of each loaf. This way, we plan on two pieces of bread per person and one loaf per 10 people. We wrap each loaf individually in aluminum foil. That way it's ready to go right on the grill. We can also store it this way in the freezer for up to two months. Well, there you have it. That completes our preparation for our barbecue picnic for 100 guests this Saturday. I'm Doug Biggs with Catering Toolbox, and I look forward to seeing you for part two in our series on barbecue picnic catering when we really get cooking.